Hello, this is JW, and this is a normal dimmer switch. And in this video, we're going to hack this switch up to have a separate undimmed output alongside with the existing dimmed output. And this is for a set of halogen lamps which need to be dimmed, and a set of fluorescent tubes which, of course, can't be dimmed and therefore just need to be switched on and off in conjunction with the other lamps. Right, here is the switch. Uh, I'll say nothing unusual about this, it's just a standard white dimmer switch. You can buy it pretty much anywhere. It's uh, one of these that actually presses on and off for the uh, switching function and then you can just turn it for the uh, various brightness levels um, because that it has three terminals on the back, uh, the common and then the two outputs which the switch will uh, switch between. So it's power in there, out on the uh, either the L1 or the L2 depending on the position of the push button and that's so it can be used with another switch. Uh, in a property so you can have it uh, controlled from two locations. Now remove the module from the plate uh, itself uh, because we actually want this white plate it's going into a uh, chrome finished plate which is already in place so uh, just undo the center nut and then that just drops out so we don't need that part we'll keep the nut uh, for future use uh, we don't actually need this knob either because it's already got a silver knob uh, in the switch that it's actually with. Now I picked this particular design because it's only held together with these clip tabs so it should be fairly easy to open and uh, get into and hopefully alter it to suit our purposes. So just pry that open and likewise Pulls off and then uh, yep, there we go. So there we have it. So, a very simple uh, little circuit there. Nothing particularly mysterious or unusual about that. This is the little circuit board. It's a single sided board, and uh, the input's here, which is the uh, live input. And that just comes straight down to the bottom here where most of the uh, dimming circuitry is located. There's a couple of uh, other bits and pieces on the side there. The uh, three channels here come out of the switch there, and they're actually just the variable resistance uh, as controlled by turning the knob. And obviously those connect into the uh, circuit at the bottom, which actually does the dimming function mainly from that, which uh, so just turns the uh, supply on and off in uh, sync with the frequency, so you only get some of the waveform going through. Uh, the switch part, which we're interested in here, are these three terminals here. Uh, these of course are the two uh, outputs, so pressing the switch uh, selects either this one or that one. And then the pin in the centre there is the output, uh, or rather the output of the dimming circuit which goes into the switch. So the dimming circuit is permanently active, it's just connected either across there or across there depending on the position of the push button. So it's either input here and output there, or input there and output in the centre. Right, this is what we're going to do to uh, modify this device. Now at the moment the live comes in here and goes straight down to the bottom to the uh, dimming electronics, which are just drawn as a box here because we're not really concerned with that. And then it comes out again to this switch and is switched between the two outputs there. Now we don't actually want that, so we're going to just cut this track here which means that the line will only go to this point and not beyond it. So that's basically cutting it there. And instead of it going through there, we'll actually direct this to the switch itself. So when the switch is off, nothing will happen. When the switch is on, of course, it will uh, obviously power the dimming circuitry in the way it did before. Now we've got two outputs. We're going to use one for the fixed output and one for the uh, dimming output. Currently the dimming output comes up here and goes to the input of the switch and then goes across. Now we don't actually want that, so what we'll do instead is just connect the output of the dimming here directly to the output. So we're actually going to bypass this switch contact altogether. And it's going to take this, uh, cut this here, and then just connect it directly to the uh, terminal at the top there. And that will provide our uh, dimmed output, as obviously when the switch is on, which we're going to use across here. It will then power that, and that will have the uh, dimmed output in the usual way. 
The middle toner we use as the fixed output. And again, that's quite a simple one to do because we're going to be powering this via the switch. So all we need to do is to connect this terminal to the output of the switch, which conveniently it already is. So it's just a matter of cutting the relevant tracks in those locations. And we'll just put some wires across to uh, make the alternative connections instead. So just summarize then, we've got the uh, switch actually effectively in here. So this will go to the switch. So that will be our fixed output, which is just basically connecting straight through the switch. And then we'll connect the uh, input of the dimming circuit there. So that then that will just go out to the uh, dimmable output over there. And the other term of the switch uh, isn't actually required, so that will not be used at all. Well, I've got the various cuts here. So here we're just going to disconnect the incoming uh, power there. Uh, we just want to isolate the switch terminal completely, so we'll cut both of those. And we want to cut this so that we can use the uh, terminal there as a permanently dimming output, which we'll then eventually have to connect to this one. So those cuts there. And just to cut those, we use the uh, grinding out tool just to actually remove the uh, copper track from those pieces. Now there we have just cleaned up any of the dust there, just to confirm that we have actually removed all of the uh, copper from the four areas there, so there's absolutely no connection between any of the remaining parts. So the next thing to do is to uh, make some alternative connections between the various pins, and uh, for that we'll just use some pieces of wire, and we'll just solder those on to the pins directly. Right, I've just made those uh, modifications, so we've got the live uh, input over here, which just knows goes straight to this pin. There's no connection between those two. And that goes straight over to the input of the push switch. Uh, if the switch is in what we're going to call the off position, uh, then this is actually connected to that. But of course this is not connected to anything, so it just sits there doing nothing. Uh, when the switch uh, is uh, in the other position, or on, as we're going to use it now, uh, this uh, pin here is now connected over to this one. And so I'll just put a bridge of wire there. That is actually a bit of wire in there. It's not just a bodged solder mess. It's a little link of wire there. So live in here, into there, across to here. Now that is, of course, connected to the center terminal. So that's our fixed live output. That's just on and off like any normal switch. And the power then will continue down this line here to the dimming circuitry at the bottom. This is the output of the dimming circuitry, and then that is now brought straight up to this top terminal, uh, and also not connected to the uh, terminals of things it was before. And the only other thing is there was a capacitor here, which is between this terminal and the one under there. And again, that's just across the uh, input terminal and the output, but uh, we've just reconnected that across uh, as it was before. So this should now work. So live in, fixed output, and dimming output. The gap there is quite small. I hope it's not a big issue because these are both uh, basically the same potential. Uh, it's either 240 volts on both or uh, 240 volts on one and uh, basically nothing on the other. So uh, not an actual issue. There's not any danger of anything uh, arcing across because uh, it's either connected or not. There's no neutral or uh, earth connection on any of this. So all that remains is just put it back into the uh, plastic case. Just two parts. Uh, I'll just slide over the front knob there, and then of course that uh, fits over there, just make sure we get the brass terminals uh, back into the uh, relevant holes there. That should just snap on. The uh, three connecting points. And there we have it, so you've got the terminals there, wires bent on those three holes, and you've got the screws on the top to tighten or loosen as required. Right, this setup uh, is just a demonstration to show how this uh, will actually work. So we have power supply over here on the uh, red uh, incoming block. This is actually isolated from the main, so uh, obviously much safer than just connecting it with uh, wires hanging about the place. Needless to say, uh, it's still uh, some danger involved, so not to be attempted by those who don't know what they're doing. So we have the uh, line in here, this uh, on the uh, brown wire here. But anyway, there's no neutrals on the switch, so it's just line in. And we have the two lines out, the uh, fixed, which goes to the uh, larger lamp there. 
and the uh, dimming output uh, which goes to this smaller one over here. Uh, the neutrals from there and here obviously just go back to the neutral on the supply. So if we uh, press the button then both the lamps come on and if we adjust the knob I'll see that only one of them actually dims and the other one stays at the full brightness all the time. Now that's exactly what we want, so say in the uh, particular application that's going to be used for the uh, dimming one is a set of uh, halogen lamps on the ceiling and the non-dimming one is uh, actually a set of fluorescent lamps uh, which of course don't, can't be dimmed as they're not uh, compatible with any kind of dimmer. They also have a minimum rating which in this case is 60 and uh, if you use it below the minimum Generally, the dimming circuitry doesn't actually work properly. In this case, it's going to be for three 50 watt halogen lamps, so that's about 150, so it's uh, right in the middle of the operating range for this one. Uh, the other types generally are 400s. Uh, above that, they generally are larger physically and uh, therefore can't be used on a single plate. Uh, not that we certainly want to be dimming over 400 watts of uh, lighting anyway, as that would be horrendously wasteful. And if you really think you should be doing it, well, uh, there's probably some other cheaper alternative with uh, LEDs or some other type of energy saving lighting. So there you have it. That's how you change a normal dimmer switch to have a second undimmed output. You could actually buy these at uh, one time with that functionality built in, but I haven't seen one for many years. And it's not surprising since such a thing is a pretty rare item which hardly anybody would actually want. And while that might not be the uh, world's best soldering job on that, it does the job and uh, will at least uh, suit this application perfectly. As I've said at the earlier parts of the video, that does involve mains voltages, so clearly it's not something you should be poking about with if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And of course if you do that and kill yourself, don't come complaining to me.